This presentation is about Digital Performer. Here at the NAMM show, we're going to preview a, a version, 902. Nice to see all of you here. So yeah, 901 is the current version, and this is a version that's going to be coming out here in a couple of weeks. So we're going to dive into some of the new features. We're going to back up just for a minute to mention a couple of awards over the past couple of years. DP has won the Electronic Musician Editor's Choice Award, uh, the whole Nine Yards Award this last, this last year. Um, Basically just saying, hey, you know, recognizing Digital Performer for kind of staying ahead of the pack, and we appreciate the recognition. Obviously, we're very close to Hollywood, the place where a lot of feature films and television series are scored. We're going to pause for a moment to look at all these different projects uh, that composers using Digital Performer. People like Michael Giacchino, Danny Elfman, Randy Newman, Thomas Newman, Trevor Rabin, the, the list goes on and on of the great film and television composers that use our products. And of course, widely used on tours. Cole plays using Mo2 hardware and software. Uh, Chemical Brothers, Miley Ray Cyrus, Usher, Van Halen, Beyonce. Cool. So let's just get into some of the new features. As you may know, in DP9, Mo2's video hardware is directly supported. So if you're in the movie window, you right click. And if you have a Mo2 HDX SDI Thunderbolt video interface, you can output SDI or HDMI video full raster, uncompressed. So some composers here in town, like Randy or Thomas Newman, use, uh, in fact, Alexander Desplat uses a Motu HDX SDI Thunderbolt for video output. And that's great that we had support for it, but users have asked for third-party video support. So Black Magic interfaces, AJA video and audio interfaces now work with Digital Performer. So that's nice that we did the work. Once the driver's installed, you'll see the hardware in the movie window. Also here in 902, this is a nice little plug-in that I'm really excited about personally. So when in DP, when you add a mono audio track and you go to the inserts, you'll see a new plug-in in the list called Sempty Z. And so when you hit play, when it's in synchronized mode, it just starts spitting out time code at whatever frame rate your host is running. So 2997, 23976, so it's just spitting it out. So now the audio channel, I could route the audio out of my interface to a second Pro Tool system or a video projector or a B system. And it's just so convenient and nice. I mean, we always gave you the ability to generate time code in Digital Performer through MIDI interfaces. But it was a little trickier with MIDI machine control or using uh, other means of cre creating time code. So still frame just means that when you pause the transport, it stays on that frame and it keeps spitting out that frame. And freewheel means if DP stops, it just continuously sends time code. It freewheels time code. So a nice little plug-in. And of course, with AVB audio interfaces on tour, it's nice to be able to use a plug-in to spend, send out time code over a network of interfaces. That's part of also the design. So we're going to switch over to Digital Performer and get into some productivity enhancements. So here we've got a pretty large project running in a special build here for 902. And the first thing you might notice right off the bat is What's this search window doing up here? Well, this is what's great about this search window is I can just start typing, and I can start finding tracks immediately that uh, are in my massive 300 MIDI channel template. Guys have asked over the years for, can I just search for my flute parts, staccato flute, clarinets, oboes, and so on? Sure, we've had folders and ways of organizing tracks in the past, but it's so nice. Isn't this a good feature? Be able to quickly jump to stuff in your template. So now, you'll notice at the very top, and we'll pull the pace out of here for a moment, we always had file, edit, region. There's a whole new menu, a whole new menu called view. So this is all things color, grid, whether I want to uh, uh, hide the edit lines, the grid lines, marker lines, and so on and so forth. But how about the ability to show different types of tracks or hide different types of tracks? Probably the number one... So the number one uh, feature that people have asked for is, can I hide empty tracks? Can I hide different types of tracks? So I could say, well, empty tracks, tracks with sound bites. Um, and, you know, the list goes on and on of various things that you may want to have visible in Digital Performer. And now you've got this whole menu dedicated to what's visible in all of the windows. This is good, useful stuff for especially large templates, right? You'll also notice we have track layouts. So, once you put Digital Performer in a state where you have certain tracks visible, you can just simply save the track layout. So Dave has a couple of uh, a presets he's created, like just the drums and percussion. Or maybe we go over to the uh, maybe keys. 
So it's nice to be able to set those up in advance. You know, maybe you have all of your strings from a certain library in a layout. You set that all up. Now, not only could I go up and menu that, that shortcut, if I go to the commands window, set up commands, and I type in the word track, we'll go to the bottom. Let's zoom down. At the very bottom, you'll notice that Dave's layouts, I can set up a, a quick key. So you can have those all on your commands. And remember, in Digital Performer, you have Mac commands and you have MIDI input for a command as well. So if you have another controller in your studio, maybe you've decided, hey, I don't need this controller, but C1 could be a certain track layout. It could be quantized, changed velocity. Cha so there's lots of ways to have shortcuts in Digital Performer via Touch OSC, Mac commands, MIDI commands, sort of endless in terms of setting up your customization. So nice. And look at all these other entries in regards to visibility that aren't even assigned. I want to see enabled tracks. I want to see only empty tracks. I want so they're, they're all in there. And now it's up to you to decide what commands to assign them to. And speaking of, uh, of visibility, you guys know the track selector, right? And use that in various windows. It's never worked in the tracks window, but it does now. I love this feature because being able to quickly bring in various tracks. And remember the little shortcuts. If you hold Option, brings up just the one. You can drag and add, or I can go Command which is everything but. It's a very quick way of seeing tracks that you want. And I really like that feature because let's say you're working on a, a song and you, you're done with certain tracks over here. You hide them and maybe in here you zoom. And that, it's just nice to organize and have the track selector. So in the tracks window. And speaking of zoom, the vertical zoom has gotten even greater in size. So watch as I zoom down. It's even thicker now. So it's a little bit easier to see. If some of you want to actually do a lot of your uh, organizational uh, orchestration stuff right in this window. It's nice and big. You can see waveforms. It's just easier on the eyes. So that's another feature that they added. A little thing that's you know might uh, in interest you is if I click on an audio region and I right click, we now give you the ability to go straight into the waveform editor. You used to have to go by way of the sequence editor, and now you can just go directly in there. Remember, the waveform editor is for doing things like analyzing beats, tempos or doing destructive edits. So if I double click on the wiper, and I control drag down, and I go all the way down, let's just see here, to the sample level, like P for pencil, I can redraw waveforms, if there's a click or pop in there. And of course, I'm in the waveform editor, so I'm doing a destructive edit. Because every other window in Digital Performer is a non-destructive window. So you could never, you can't pencil tool, you know, waveforms in other windows than the waveform editor. But we can get there quickly now from the tracks window. Let's switch over to the mixing board. This is a little feature that I've been begging for and I finally got in this version. You always have the ability to drag and see the actual send levels, but now you can pop edit them. And I love this feature because I don't want to have to drag down to minus 12, minus, I don't want to go, you know what, I just want it to be minus 20, boom. So those are the things that are going to be in a couple of weeks that will be free, free download for nine users. But we're also kind of un, uncharacteristically going to show you some things that are just a little bit farther down the road than 902. And something that I'm pretty excited about is hardware inserts. So here's the concept. I'm in the Digital Performer Mixer, and if I right click on the inserts, I've got a new plugin in the list. This plugin lets me basically send the audio signal from the insert out of my analog interfa audio interface into, let's say, and you see in the rack here in 1176, obviously it could be a Pultec EQ. If we have great outboard analog hardware, we can go into it and now return from our audio interface back into the plugin. We hit the detect button, it sends a ping, and it calculates the round trip in latency. Then it does an offset of playback sample accurately. So now you're, you're playing through your out, outboard rec effects unit, you're going out through your ex, you know, analog compressor, and it's coming back in digital performer, and it's being compensated for sample accurately. So very cool to have hardware inserts. So that's again coming uh, hopefully in a version near you soon. Cool. Low, lower host latency. So this is kind of something that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, there's been a lot of work under the hood in regards to Motu's audio engine. And some of the benefits have been a lower host latency. So our developers are saying at this point, based on this redoing of the engine, that when you're running a buffer, let's say a 512 or 256, it's actually going to feel like half the amount of latency. So basically, we reduced host buffer latency by half of its current amount in this next version of Digital Performer. So 256 will feel like 128 and so on and so forth. So, and part of the byproduct of this new uh, engine is also going to be in this next feature that I'm going to show you. So lower host latency and 
a new a new thing as a result of this is something called next gen pre gen. So in digital performer, you know, we're we're aware of running in real time versus pre gen, and pre gen basically just looks ahead and it does a, a rendering of virtual instruments in advance of playback. So we've done a lot of work in this to make it much, much more efficient for running virtual instruments. So we're going to pause and go back to Digital Performer, and I'm going to show you a, a, a really nice mock-up uh, featuring some virtual instruments. So you can see we've got some chunks here. We're going to double-click on this, this chunk. And I've got it zoomed here for those of you with excellent vision. Hopefully you can even see this. And I'll zoom a little bit so you can see what this looks like. A nice big orchestral cue. In fact, let's play it. Looks like we're going to jump in here at bar two. So, so what are we doing here exactly? Well, obviously we're showing a fantastic queue created with CineSamples, which is an amazing sample library company, and they've been very generous in, in giving us this beautiful queue and letting us use these wonderful samples. But really what this is about in a way is showing that, look at, look at the V-Rack for a moment, and the fact that we're running 12 instances of contact, and if you open up an instance, let's say as an example, it's like, well, hey, here we go. We've got, we're in strings, we've got legato sections and so on. I guess some choir things in this particular instance, but 12 nearly full instances of contact running CineSamples, amazing sounding orchestral libraries. And look at the processor at a buffer of 64. How about that right there? Look at that. 64. I mean, that is pretty remarkable. This is very much sort of the under the hood things that a lot of composers have asked for, um, giving us efficiency. So really, you know, without jumping the gun here, might make Digital Performer one of the most efficient DAWs on the market, especially in regards, we already had the ability to run an unthinkable amount of audio plugins, but running virtual instruments like Contact with the amazing CineSample libraries at a buffer of 64, that's a great sign for the future of Digital Performer.